Welcome to the second video in our brushed quadcopter build series. Now, in the first video, we spent a lot of time looking at the flight controller and talking about how now, with the flight controllers that are available, building these things is no longer as weird and wacky and exotic as it used to be. We're going to be able to use clean flight, beta flight, and a lot of the stuff that we've already done on the channel to make our own little brushed indoor flyer. Now, this one might not just be an indoor flyer because this is going to be run on 2S batteries. It's also going to use these little motors here. Here. These are 1020 motors. They're significantly bigger than a lot of the motors that we're using on some of the other indoor quads. It's quite typical to have these 8.5 by 20 millimeter motors. These 10 by 20s are a lot bigger. The props are a lot larger and this little guy is going to run 2S. Now interestingly looking at the motor specs, they don't talk about these things supporting 2S. So I'm fascinated to see how this thing's going to be when it's all together. Now the model that we're actually putting together here comes as a kit, so everything that we need is supplied. The only thing we need to do is add a receiver and a radio, and we're going to use a Turnergy Evolution to put all this together. And this is actually a model from CortexRC.com. They have three models that they sell. This is the Tiny 115, which has the bigger motors. There's a Tiny 80, which is kind of similar to that QX90, QX80 that we've seen on the channel before. And then finally, they have the Tiny 100 which is similar to the one that we're building but hasn't got the big motors. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at all the pieces you need to build your quadcopter. Luckily, because everything has come as part of the kit here, we're going to be able to show each of the pieces as you go along. But each of the steps that we're going to go through as part of this video, you could absolutely use if you wanted to build your own model with the own motors, flight controller and other pieces that you're interested in as well. So let's go through the individual pieces that you're going to need to put a quadcopter like this together. The first thing you're going to need is the motors, and that's the place to start, really. The QX90 that we were just looking at that has the 8.5 by 20 millimeter motors with a standard kind of hub sand style props is about 57, 58 grams in total. And those are decent motors for that weight of model. So if you're looking to build something like this, then 8.5 by 20 motors is fine and it'll run beautifully on a one cell lipo battery we'll see what the performance is of these motors that we're interested in in the kit we get three of each we get three of the clockwise and the counterclockwise so that's nice these things are consumable they don't last forever so once you've got enough flights on them the performance is going to start to degrade and you'll end up swapping them out so the fact we have a couple of spares of these motors is very handy once we know the motors that we need, then the next thing we need to figure out is the frame that we're going to use. Now the frame here that we're using is this kind of uh, carbon fiber contraption here. So it's all one piece, has lots of room in the ends. So the way it works is that these O-rings fit in the ends of the arms and then the motors push into them. The nice thing about this frame, it has extra supports underneath the motors. The big problem that you can have with these kind of models is particularly with these smaller motors, the bottoms of the motors are just crimped on with little crimps. And if you get too hard a hit on the shaft, it can push all of the motor gubbins out the back. And the little brushes that operate here at the bottom of the motor are about the size of a human eyelash. So as soon as they start to get bent out of shape, then the motor's completely unusable. So the fact it has some supports that fit under these, if we land upside down, we're not going to destroy the motors. That's great too. For those of you with a 3D printer, then you can also print your own frames. This is one that we printed for a friend of ours. Um, I'd recommend always printing these kind of things in ABS if you're going to do it, because they need to be slightly flexible um, and also quite strong as well to take the hits. The next thing you need to figure out then is the flight controller you want to use. Now, we have an option here in the kit that we managed to get our hands on. So thanks to Cortex RC for sending us this. Uh, NASA 32 brushed controller. We're not going to use that one. NASA 32 is running on very old F1 based technology now. Uh, we're going to use this one here that we had a look at in that first video, which is a seriously pro board. So we're going to put everything together with that. And this is part of what's going to make the build an awful lot easier. Next thing we need to figure out then is some lightweight FPV gear. Again, this has come as the kit, but we've looked at other cameras like this as well. Beautiful little lightweight cameras, 
that actually run everything all in one piece. It's a camera, video transmitter, and everything all in one go. They weigh buttons, and this will fit on the front of our craft and allow us to fly it with FPV. Now, we have a 25 milliwatt version here, which is perfect for indoors and close in work, but you can also get these size camera transmitters in 200 milliwatts as well, and we've looked at one of those on the channel. Next thing we need then is a lightweight radio and receiver. We're going to be using the Turnigy Evolution with a little receiver that comes with that. That gives us both SBUS and PPM outputs, which is perfect. That is going to work great for us here. We obviously need a LiPo battery. Now the LiPo battery that we're using here comes as part of the kit. This is a little two cell job and it is a whacking 500 milliamp hour hours. Now, I think this may be a little bit big for the model. We'll see what it's like in practice. Something like a 350 or that kind of size might be a slightly better option. But we'll give it a go and we'll see how it performs with these larger motors. And finally, the last thing you're going to need is going to be PC with either beta flight or clean flight. We've already looked at the fact that the flight controller comes with clean flight on it, so we'll be able to use that. Now, if you go onto the website for CortexRC.com and you look at the Tiny 115, then if you scroll down right at the very bottom, underneath all the nice pictures, there is the instructions. Now, the instructions is actually a JPEG, and what we're going to do is follow along with this and make up all the connections that we need. Once all of those connections are done, then in the next video, we'll actually configure the radio, set it up, go into clean flight, do those bits and pieces, and then we'll go for a fly and talk about what this thing is like in practice. So the first step as we look at the manual is to wire up the motors and the power to the board itself and then pop the board onto the frame. So let's do that first and we'll come back and have a look at what that looks like. So the first thing we did was install those grommets into the ends of the arms and then put those little feet underneath. Once they're slid home, a little dab of super glue will kind of keep them in place. Then pushed the motors home and you can see here that they kind of fit quite nicely and routed the cables so that they'd go into the central position. Next job then is to start soldering the connectors onto the flight controller. Uh, need to, to tin a couple of these connections because they didn't have a lot of solder on them and then we're starting to get very close up with a lot of light I'm having to use a very fine tip soldering iron here and then I'm also going to have to use a magnifying glass just to make sure that I'm making the connections really nicely and I'm not bridging any of these small pieces that's part of the challenge with making these small models although it's got a lot easier with things like the clone seriously racing board meaning we can use clean flight and beat flight you still have to have a steady hand and very good eyesight to do the soldering so once we've put the power connections on, then we popped it into the frame using the double-sided tape that was there and started to make the connections off for the motors. Again, very fiddly, take your time, make sure that you're leaving a little bit of slack for each of the connections as you go around the board. The connections and the polarity of the wires is absolutely documented in the manual and it's nice and clear. Then we got hold of the receiver that we're going to use with the radio that we've selected. And what I did is I completely removed all of the packaging from it. So here we are with a naked radio receiver. And what I'm going to do is actually desolder the pins that we'd normally put a servo connector on. And I'm going to solder wires directly to the ground plus 5 volts and also the S bus out, which just happens to be the way I'm going to use it here. And then that will allow me to then solder those other ends onto the connectors on the board itself. So here is that receiver with those wires soldered on, the pins removed, and then there's the other ends connected onto the flight controller. Now the flight controller and the radio receiver are about the same size, and luckily there's just enough room in here, and I'll show you what it looks like in a second when we've finished looking at the photos. It just all fits together. Next job then is to install the camera. The camera gets its power plus 5 volts and ground from these pads at the side. And then once we've done that, that's pretty much all of the connections made. And then it's just a case of starting to put it all together physically. So let's go back to the bench and I'll show you what it looks like all back together in one piece. 
So here we are under the bright table light to just show you what it looks like. I'm about to close this thing up. The battery fits on the bottom. There's a couple of bits of included rubber that attach to the bottom of the frame, stop that sliding, which is good. Here's all the connections that we've just done. You can see in here we have the battery connection, each of the motors are going to the sides and then we have the connections from the receiver which is above down onto the flight controller as well. Now the receiver only just fits and it's about the same size as the flight controller and everything else so what you need to do is just pop the side wall pieces on and the top piece as well and then there are these two posts at the back that you screw into the top and bottom plate that holds everything in place. The side pieces themselves just slide into position and everything's locked by those two posts at the back and hopefully you can see here the way that I've had to route the cables for the antenna. The antennas on this receiver that we're using here are huge so we've had to kind of route them around in quite a circuitous way to make sure that they fit. So let me just screw these posts into the back and I'll show you the final things with it all back together. So here it is, all in one piece, ready to configure clean flight. And hopefully now you can see how I've had to route these antennas. So the way it happens is, you just see there's enough space in there. I had to actually cut a little bit out of each of these posts uh, to make sure that this thing could fit for the receiver. And it also kind of keeps it from bouncing down and hitting the flight controller too. But the antennas go all the way around the model and up through the top through these little 3D printed pieces that I've made. These are just like little figure eights but um, any little bit of plastic you could burn a couple of holes through it with a soldering iron would do great. So join me in the next video. Now we've done all the hard work we'll set the radio up, we'll configure all that, we'll test it out and fly it and I'll let you know what this thing's like. All at weight at the moment is around 96 grams. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.